Hey guys, welcome back to Inner Stage Window, my Saturday stream that, as you guys know, is a conversation with my friends. And today I have here with me Landon and Kendra. Say hi, guys. I missed you guys so much. Oh my gosh. So before we get started really quick, I just have to tell everybody, obviously my background is completely different. Um, we have had some family drama and, uh, and I'm not going to get too into it on this stream, but basically what that means is I am in my childhood home right now. Also, I am on wireless internet, so I expect dropped frames, expect some craziness. I sincerely apologize for that. I am also recording this directly on my computer, so the VOD version that goes up will not have as many of these types of issues, hopefully, um, when I when I present, you know, when I put the VOD up on my channel. So um, if the stream doesn't last a full two hours today or if things get wonky, I sincerely apologize. But um, but I don't have time to change it. This this is what it is. So that's what we're doing. Um, so with that with that being said, okay, uh, Kendra, say hi, y'all. Kendra's hi. on the screen. She's actually on yeah. camera, guys. Isn't that amazing? Hey, this is my test. This is my <laughs> test for Monday. Can I do two hours on a camera? We'll yes, see. <laughs> you can. You're wonderful. I'm so excited. I know hair flip. I've got braids, <laughs> so I can't really hair flip today. But I'm just like yes. Wait, you do the, the braid flip. Uh, yeah, and and a hair flip isn't about how much hair you're flipping. It's all about the attitude. Okay. So you could hypothetically hair flip <laughs> with no hair, and mm -hmm. you have a braid. So that means you have a little bit more attitude. You're a little spunky. That's right. Yeah. So welcome in, Jane. I see you in the chat there. So happy to have you here. Um, yeah, this is my childhood bedroom. And uh, and that's why the background's totally different. And you'll see some some fun things behind me. These are just knickknacks that my parents happened to keep that um, that I had. This is not all of them. I had, you know, many more as a child, but this is just some random ones. So you'll see some fun stuff back there. Um, but that being said, Landon, what is it that we're talking about today? We are talking about the rules and regulations of historical fiction and what is historical fiction and all things about that and building one into your RP uh, or other writing works if you want to, mm -hmm. but focusing yeah. mo mostly on the RP aspect of it. Yes. <laughs> like my favorite thing. Yeah, yes, so that's why absolutely. Kendra's here. Because um, I am not super into historical fiction or historical fantasy. I have, I have some relationship with it because um, D&D definitely counts as, uh, as pulling in certain historical things in, into their historical fantasy, right? But, um, but Kendra's really our guru on this subject, so. <laughs> that was my special hyperfixation as a child. Mm -hmm. It's a good fixation to have. Now, here's the question. What era of historical fiction were you like hyper focused on or was it just anything that took place in all of history? So it was ancient Egypt and Tudor England. Ooh. So the two of those combined. Two, some of the two popular ones. Yeah, the weirdest mix, honestly. Very interesting. interesting. All right. Great. Well, before that, we should probably talk about favorite things. <laughs> yes, let's do favorite Yay. things. Okay, I have, I have an episode appropriate one. Um, so I, when, when this show first came out with Peaky Blinders is my favorite thing this week. And when it first came out, I was so super into this hardcore. And then I kind of fell off, off of it. I watched like the first, um, three seasons and was like super hardcore into it, but there's actually five seasons of the show. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the total right now. So I decided it was time to go back to Peaky Blinders. So I watched on um, the fourth season and I started on the fifth one this week and I was just like totally sucked back in. I mean, Cillian Murphy, like. Oh, mm. he yeah. has my heart he oh, has my heart yeah and uh and I I love the the era that this uh that this show takes place in and mm -hmm. um you know it's like the gangsters right in the later seasons the actual like mafia from New York kind of comes in mm -hmm. um even though it's taking place in England and uh, and it's all really fun stuff if you guys have not checked it out and you're fans of uh of that type of era or you're fans of Cillian Murphy you've absolutely got to check out Peaky Blinders it is a fabulous show also, That's my research really, really kind of hot men smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes. Oh my god, so many! Not gonna men. lie, and lots so of many hot men. Mostly murder. So <laughs> yes, oh my god, so many, so many hot men. Welcome in, Lunar. Welcome in. I'm soaking Hi. wet. I'm a soggy Luna. Well, you and Jane oh. can be soggy together. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jane seems to like being soggy. Mm -hmm. It must be okay. 
So that's yeah. my favorite thing this week. Kendra, do you want to share your favorite thing next? Yeah. Um, my favorite thing is, so I work in a hotel that is, I want to classify it as haunted. There are just spirits hanging out. They don't do much except like protect the hotel. Isn't that and kind of every what haunted October, means though? I'm just going to just... say. <laughs> I feel like haunted means like there's some like spooky actions happening. And oh. besides like the eight year old changing smells, there's not a lot. Every October, my boss has this medium come in and they do a haunted night to like commune with the teacher spirit and all of that. And then commune with whoever is hanging out around the guests. And I get to go. <laughs> We're doing two. I get to go to the second one. I'm so excited. <laughs> this sounds dope as fuck. I oh know. Oh my God. I I'm know. just sitting here like, I want to do this. Right? That like, sounds like the best year. Halloween adventure. Oh my God. Like, just go talk to a medium. Go talk to the teacher ghost. Maybe. I Donna said that um, I get to take the medium downstairs to the basement where I have found some men hanging out. In like the weird saloon section. Yeah. So I'm just like, yeah, let's go. Oh my fun. gosh. Cool. Oh my god. I hope so. you have a, a wonderful spooky time. Seriously, oh, that sounds hear so all fun. About it. <laughs> yes, I, I'm so excited. I actually, if you want to just live stream it, that would be great. Okay. Would, like, yeah. Uh huh. Um. <laughs> I would watch that. I would watch that okay. for sure. I would 100% right. watch that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my oh. god, that sounds so fun! I'm so excited for you, Kendra. Um, so I mean, I love haunt I love haunted houses and things like that. So that sounds like the perfect like Halloween activity uh, to me. Having a medium come in and and do like do like a seance ghost thing. Yeah, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Love All it. right, Landon, do you Thank want to share you. your favorite thing next? Yes. Uh, this this week's favorite thing MVP true MVP is uh, Dayquil. Um, <laughs> I had my first cold, uh, in, uh, you know, you go to a funeral and you come away with some sort of sickness and it wasn't COVID got COVID tested, but it was a cold. Mm. Uh, so just goes to show you that masking doesn't work a hundred percent of the time and stay safe out there kids. And also take a lot of day quell. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think, yeah. And then I, so some, that's like the that's like this jokey one and then the uh, non-jokey one is that I have a lot of art coming in for my house yeah. recently so it's starting to look really put together and I love it Aww. So slowly yeah, I saw surely. that photo you added to your bathroom that well not photo oh, like yeah. painting or drawing or whatever it was and it would look really <gasps> nice against your wall everyone go follow my Instagram it's beautiful it's really nice um I'm making the entire bathroom gem themed so I yes. have some uh, like rose quartz and regular quartz poles from the cabinets. Um, I'm, I have commissioned my friend Kelsey to paint watercolored gems for the walls. I'm just, I'm thrilled. It's going to be great. That sounds amazing. Apparently I moved into a nicer place and I became a uh, person who like is about uh, interior design. I'm like, everything needs to match. All oh, the colors need to complement each other. It's yours, though. That's so it's true. not like you're doing it just to take it down in a year. That's mm -hmm. true. Yes. No, I'm mm -hmm. here for a while. So, yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah no, it's awesome. It's fantastic. Yep. I love that. I love it so much. So follow along on my Instagram uh, if you want to see any of this cool art pieces coming in. It's pretty cool. <laughs> For sure. Landon has a really good Instagram too. Welcome in Redberg. Um, so nice to see you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. We look exquisite guys. Yes, we do. Mm. <laughs> with with the drop frames and everything, again, just for the people that, that didn't weren't here at the very, very start of the stream. Um, I am at my parents' house right now. That's why the background is different and I'm on the wireless internet. That's how we, we set it up. Um, I do see that we're having a lot of drop frames and, and issues. Uh, I will be, I'm recording this on my computer as well, which means that the VOD should not have that problem. So I apologize for those watching live that are going to, that are going to have those issues. Um, but yeah, if it's bothering you, you too much, then uh, you're more than welcome to just watch the VOD when that goes up. So that is what it is. I'll try to fix it before next stream. We'll go from or there. Just, or just listen to our beautiful voices, put us on yep. like for a podcast. Yep. Just minimize uh, and listen. <laughs> yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I suggest. 
Yeah. Um, you will miss out on our beautiful faces, but that's okay. Cause we got, we got that siren song voice calling for you. There we go. That's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, are you a writer? Right. I listen. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to be. Uh, yes. So shall we jump into historical fiction? Mm-hmm. Yes. Topic at hand. Um, okay. So I think the first thing we need to talk about is. Oh, I'm going to go slightly out of order here. What is historical fiction? Oh, what is historical fiction? I guess when, when I think of it, I think of like, you know, the the idea was sparked from something in history and it takes place in history. And there is um, there are some elements of the story that are that are grounded in that particular time and place. Like when I think of historical fiction, that's kind of the things that that I'm thinking of. And, and when I see those things, I'm kind of like, OK, well, that makes it historical fiction, you know. I have a yes. hot take. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Go for uh, it. I think unless there is a direct transcript of something that happened, everything could be historical fiction because we don't actually know what happened. 90% of the time, <laughs> um, historian, like any time that we write something that happened in the past more than 50 years ago, where we don't have a record of the actual event and what actually happened, the, the details are all fictional. Mm-hmm. They're all what we assume happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, Can so, I add to your hot take? Please add to my hot take, Kendra. Even with the transcript, you can still have it be historical fiction because there's not a transcript of what's happening in the player's minds. Yeah. And, the major and you know, players in the transcript. And so, and you know, like we know from court records and, and court documents and things like that, that witness testimony is flawed and inaccurate. So why would that be any different when it comes to history? We're doing our best to look at what people have said and what they've written down compared to the actual physical and forensic evidence that we have and trying to put it together in the best we can to figure out what really happened. But um, you're right. On on some level, we don't know. And the farther back we go, the less we know. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. uh, the more that the more open to ideas we become the more context we have for things that are happening back then. Uh, We'll talk about racism a lot here in this episode, but another one is queer history. There is like this whole thing where it's like Alexander Hamilton um, is my favorite example of this is because everyone's like, oh, he married Eliza. He must be straight. Uh, And as we as a society have grown more accustomed to looking into our history and looking for queer people within our history, recognizing that he wrote love letters to several men, but mostly his best friend, Lawrence, uh, shows that like, that as we grow and expand our thinking, uh, it gives us new context on how to look at the past. And so even though we had those letters before, we're now looking at it differently. And histo- that's literally a historian's job to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And we'll never be perfect. Uh, a lot of those things were also censored very early mm-hmm. on. Yeah. So, so what you have essentially- to do some extra work. Yes. So basically what this means is that anybody that truly wants to believe in Miku Binder Jefferson, it's, it might be possible. It might have happened. You never know. <laughs> don't. We don't. <laughs> Listen. If I have it could to, have if happened. I have do, if I have to give it up on one thing, I guess I also have to give it up on that. Uh, <laughs> it could have happened. <laughs> I don't know that Miku was around for there to be. You know a what, Kendra? Okay, those are details. You know, and we and maybe it and maybe have another name. Yeah, and you know, those are those are details, and like maybe and maybe that dips a toe into historical fantasy instead of historical fiction. But I'm just saying, I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Hatsune Fair, Miku fine. is an enigma. You know she could have. <laughs> could have happened where's that fanfic uh, <laughs> it's a drawing somewhere. it's a drawing on tumblr i, I don't know. know if there's a fanfic of it I've, I've only seen the drawing that is fan art, uh, unless it's it could be hate art it, the artist could where both of them. is oh god i don't the know fanfic of miku in every major historical set that you is what i need now here first kendra wants a hundred thousand word fan fiction of mm-hmm. miku in every single 
uh, event that happened that was part of world history. Yeah, I'm you can name Miku it, the time traveler. Link it <laughs> Miku, to, my, uh, to my Twitter. Miko discovers the wheel. <laughs> Miko discovers the wheel in Mesopotamia. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, it could be historical fiction. Why guys. not? Yeah. Uh, why not? <laughs> Let it happen. Let your creative mm-hmm. juices flow. <laughs> um. Okay. To get back on track. Uh. <laughs> The definition of historical fiction is something that happened 50 years or more ago. So anything that happened in the early 2000s, things like that, that is not historical fiction. However, yes. if, we put on our, if, yet, if we put on our little hats, our math hats, uh, and do the math, it turns out the things that happened in the 60s and 70s, which feels very recent uh, in the terms of history, mm-hmm. is actually under the umbrella of historical fiction. So if you wanted to have a novel or RP take place during the civil rights era movement um, and interact with like Martin Luther King, that's a historical fiction RP, mm-hmm. a historical fiction story. Uh, so it is, it is not things that happen in medieval times, which is a lot of the time what goes under that umbrella, Tudor, England, you know, ancient Egypt. It is things as recent as 50 years ago. Mm-hmm. Landon, you know what that means. In 10 years time, the 80s will be historical fiction, and then I will just have to crawl into my grave. I just think... No. (laughs) Not allowed. (laughs) Oh, that makes me so sad. We'll be the old guys. (laughs) We already are. At some point, our reality, our lived memories, will be able to take place in a historical fiction story. That's terrifying. Yep. Absolutely terrifying. Mm-hmm. Absolutely uh, terrifying. Yeah. I hate this. <laughs> Actually, we can stop aging now. Thanks. It'll be the year 21. It'll be the year 2021 forever. Okay. That sounds no. good to me. No. I will just, I will that just um, go, I will go find my sword boyfriend, Sunder, and um, get him yeah. to turn me into a vampire. Like, that's what we're going to do, guys. That actually would make it worse because then everything you experience would be historical. Fiction. Landon, stop. Okay, this is a very not well thought out plan. Just let me have it. <laughs> I came up with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're silly today, guys. We're so silly. It's all those <laughs> drop frames that are making us silly. It's a yep. silly, goofy mood. It's fine. <laughs> Just yeah, a silly, okay. goofy mood. Um, no, so... <laughs> To talk about some of the most popular tropes when it comes to historical fiction, Mm -hmm. uh, we of course talked about medieval era, Tudor, Mm -hmm. England, uh, any anywhere in the span of where you think like castles existed, castles and kings and queens, and actual working monarchies. Mm -hmm. uh, That kind of your sorry, I should clarify European monarchies. There are still plenty of monarchies in the world today. Uh, Technically, Europe still has their monarchies. They just you know. (laughs) <laughs> um, most most don't actually have a government that is mm-hmm. like their mo- their government isn't run mon- on a monarchy. They'll no, nope, the government just people. pays them to stay rich. <laughs> yes, uh, but this is like where the power actually rests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anytime during when that happened is basically historical fiction. Yep. And this uh, is where you anything- get a lot of your historical fantasy too. This is where you yeah. get like your Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the this Rings is- and all of that stuff like that. Um, that's all, that's all kind of like in this, in this like kind of amorphous blob of, you know, European monarchy plus dragons, right? Like Game of Thrones and things like that. Um, so a lot of that has a lot to do with um, with the historical fiction as well, because those are typically inspired from actual events. For example, Game of Thrones is inspired from um, the War of the Roses. If you look at the War of the Roses, very, that's very obvious and very clear, right? Yeah. Hey, Jed, how's it going? How's it going? Happy to see you here today. Hey, Jed. Yeah. So, uh, so anytime that um, you think of like your your medieval fantasy, you're typically thinking about um, some kind of like medieval era historical fiction where they've added in like dragons and things. Yeah, and then in our hot take, when we're sitting there and saying that everything is historical fiction, then it is important to do that clarification of what is fiction and fantasy. Uh, fiction is all the things that we make believe that could conceptually happen in our reality. Mm-hmm. Fantasy is anything beyond our reality. So yep. right now. As a majority, we don't believe in dragons, even though I think that that is wrong. Uh, so we, have, 
that people see dolphins like <laughs> i don't know just dolphins to me is scream dragon oh my god point. the more i learn about dolphins the more i'm just like they're evil and obviously dragons yes no well dolphins are evil, but that's- <laughs> okay <laughs> um but dragons didn't exist at least in our historic context and therefore break the rule into fantasy so fantasy is that is the important difference because a lot of the times they'll all be wrapped up into one people will think historical fiction is fantasy and hate and vice versa and it it gets very confusing and you know jean and and genre lines are are fuzzy and and uh, amorphous and so you know that is what it is yes um another very popular trope is westerns uh or civil war era Mm -hmm. um and they that happens quite a bit and also often happen separately even though they happened historically at the same time it's Uh, very interesting to see two groups posting ads at the same time and one is like "Ooh, ooh western western and it's the same exact year as the civil war one yeah, no, this, this is happening. but they didn't. They don't yeah. engage with each other at all. No, no not in the role play world. At wild least, Wild West was moral, right? It was just, it was wild. The Civil War was wrong. Anyway, uh, that's a whole thing on my own. Uh, and then any the World War era <laughs> wars sort of things that is all historical fiction that is very very popular. And then anything with the word ancient in front of it, ancient Greece. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient Egypt. Jed, oh. Jed. <laughs> what did Jed say? Okay, here we go. Historically, since All dragons right. are inherently isolationists, there tended to be very little opportunity for shaming and moralistic community approaches. Therefore, dragon culture fast track to male dragons cross-dressing at a record pace. It is from this phenomenon that we take the term drag. Jed, you are being so British right now. I'm just going to, I'm just going to like, I'm just going to like say this. You're being so British right now and I'm dying. I'm dying on the inside. You're so funny. I need a David (laughs) Attenborough like type reading of that, please. Jed could totally do a David Attenborough voice. I I believe it. Jed, you could do one. I know you could. that documentary. (laughs) <laughs> this is why I'm never that's not true Jed you're invited to every party no. you're invited mm-hmm. to every party I need these comments <laughs> this is your yes every party you are now a requirement for me to have a party have to <laughs> yeah have that's facts like that that's the kind of people I want at my parties like come on <laughs> so so um, drag dragons basically if you see some drag yeah. dragons that's um historical fantasy not historical fiction mm-hmm. well <laughs> yes unfortunately yeah unfortunately <laughs> all right so anyways back to this western civil war era so so you'll also you'll see in the role play community and because i'm not like huge on historical fiction i don't know if this is the case in like just t- typical historical fiction or or whatever but it's definitely the case in the role play community where you will see like civil war era role plays and you'll see western mm-hmm. wild west role plays and and never never the two should meet they're they're passing ships in the night um for and for whatever reason this is the case this is where the genre lines have been defined and i find i find that fascinating i don't have like a thesis on it or or anything fun to say about it i just i it just is something that always amuses me when i scroll through role play ads yeah it's, it's, oh i have many theses on it but we yeah will so do i <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, it depends on what sort of themes the author wants to explore racist. a lot of the time well okay listen <laughs> we'll talk about that in a second we'll get to that you're jumping ahead you're jumping ahead ahead. (laughs) all right so now that we've discussed what is historical uh fiction Mm -hmm. we should talk about how to build a historical fiction rp with some historical realism Mm -hmm. um and what that looks like Oh, there's another one just to, that you'll hear us probably pop up with um, is is World War eras. That's another thing that gets very popular. Oh, yeah. in role play. You'll see like World War One role plays or World War Two role plays or, or things like that. So you might yeah. hear us bring in examples of, of that as well as we're, and we're considering that historical fiction. And there, his, there are historical fantasies of those as well. Yeah. And then anything with the word ancient in it, ancient Greece, ancient yep. Egypt, yep. Rome, ancient China, anything like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. Sorry, I, I, cut, I cut you off, Landon. Go for it. No, so I was just saying, like, okay, how do we build a historical fiction RP 
while also keeping in mind historical realism, because that's, I, I think a lot of people really get hung up on this. Uh, we don't want it to be historical fantasy, so we need it to be real. So we need to have like some sort of grasp into realism. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's a double-edged sword because you could either go way too far into realism uh, and then you can also just like not go far enough with realism mm -hmm. or you can use realism as a weaponized uh, it, yeah we'll get there too mm -hmm. yeah uh, <laughs> still jumping ahead <laughs> listen so much of this discussion is it's just, just like mm, it's yeah. so frustrating honestly um, it, but so so mm -hmm. I so just to kind of let y'all know um, our various stances. I think we should say like how, a little bit about how we personally feel about this topic. So this is how I personally feel. Um, fuck realism. That's how I feel in all regards. And so this is probably not surprising to anybody that's a common listener. For me, when it comes to role play, I am mostly concerned with the group and I'm mostly concerned with, um, you know, making sure everybody's having fun. So what that means is like, if, if something is real and it's going to cause people to not have fun, then we don't need it in the role play. Yes. Yeah. So that's my stance. Um, I got you a gift. <gasps> oh, my God. Ooh, it's a little You guys, look. Ooh. Okay, and this is very appropriate to to my stance on historical fantasy. We've got some uh, unicorn jello cups. I'm going to enjoy one of these <gasps> uh, while, oh while Landon goodness. and Kendra tell you about their stance on historical what? fantasy versus yes. fiction. Why and say, say hi, Levi. Levi. He's right behind the camera. Hi, Levi. <laughs> hi, Levi. <laughs> they said hi. Oh, oh. We, we love sure Levi. Or do you want any? One's good. I'll give you the rest. Yeah, that's what I thought. I just thought you would like the packaging. Um, it's very cute. Yeah. All right. Go oh, ahead, guys. Good luck, Jedlam. No. So the Jed, thank you for lurking. Yeah. Um, my opinion on this, I um find history fascinating and wonderful and dramatic on its own. That I do, I do like having some um grasp in realism. However. Uh, I think that people take it too far. I think people try to live by it too much. Um, and I also think that they then weaponize it in certain degrees too. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, like, I like the concept of being able to keep something realistic. In an RP, it's a lot harder to do. Uh, the parameters are a lot harder to exist within because then like, if you don't have someone who is as attached to the realism stories, uh, you're gonna have a harder time. You're gonna have that a makes sense time to me because yeah, if realism is highly important, then everybody has to be just as committed to research as everybody else. Yes, it's mm -hmm. a very hard Absolutely. balance to strike in role play. Yes. yes. Um, I do think that in role play, this is a this is a large challenge. If you are doing something like independent or a small group is writing yeah. a project of some sort, whether it be an RP like small group RP. Uh, or it be a uh, book or something like that that you're co-writing. I think that then trying to, if you're really going for historical fiction, tying in actual realities of yeah. what we know is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, as long as you're not projecting your opinions from you know 2021 onto what was mm -hmm. happening. If that, that gets really tricky. Yeah. Oh yeah, and yeah. no one is good at it. Like that's historians literally get degrees and and PA, like doctorate degrees in order to learn how not to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, and they still suck. and they still go to their historian conventions and argue oh, yeah. with each other. Those are no. my favorite stories. Again, that's why as we as we change our context and look on, on things as a culture, why things that we have known come to light in a different perspective, like. It's not, it's not even a personal thing. It is a cultural wide thing. Like mm -hmm. you can't, un can't undo the writing that you've been raised with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So Kendra, what's, what's your stance on this whole, like how realistic you need to be? For me personally, <laughs> I am, I don't want to say committed. I think that the realism comes in with the aesthetics and less the I'm trying not to jump ahead and it's very hard Landon I'm sorry 
Well, it's fine. <laughs> I've been, I've been hounding you, and now it's like, oh, um, it's it's the aesthetics. It's about the the scenery and the background stuff more than what is happening directly in the lens. Uh, it can inform what's happening in the lens, but those stories to me are not just isolated to whatever historical era you're working in there especially in rp uh, for me the types of rps i'm attracted to are usually historical fiction or historical fantasy just because the setting and the scenery and all of the aesthetics can come in and make the tropes that i want to write about just so much more dramatic than they would be otherwise and that's the fun part for me I feel like yeah. what you're saying is that like ultimately for you, no matter when the setting is, you're still writing about Kendra and 2021, no matter, no yeah. matter what, it's really more of an aesthetic choice. Mm -hmm. I think that's an fair. aesthetic choice for me. I think that's fair. And I think, and I think a lot of people are doing that, whether they admit it or not. Yeah, no, I'm, you know what? It's aesthetics. I like, I can't read a lot of romance novels because I know too much about um, proper historical garb and so when they sit there and go I rip the corset open I'm like no you're not you're not gonna rip duck <laughs> double layers of duck fabric with whalebone I'm sorry that's not going to happen maybe they're well, very well, very strong Kendra. 20, it's not happening um, <laughs> even then even then I would never I would never or it's oh yeah I'm wearing a corset directly against my skin in a time period where one there weren't corsets and two you would never wear that directly against your skin it would ruin the garment and that just draws me right out so it's just it's a finding that balance between hey I want to see the love interest in a rainy field with a poet shirt like Darcy but I also need to be able to you know know that certain things aren't going to happen and I think I think that's about like mitigating expectations both mm -hmm. as a it, it, as someone who's consuming like a reader or someone who is running an RP and knowing that your your fellow writers might not be accurate they might not yeah. take into consideration or know how a course it is made or when a course it can be used and yeah all of that so so again it's like mitigating your expectations but mm -hmm. I understand the want to um consume accurate historical fiction yeah uh to those aesthetic levels absolutely mm -hmm. and it's like um, once you know you can't unknow it's like you can't unknow that yeah, how courses it, are supposed to work oh. once you know yeah once you know it's and it's rough and it's also like it's also I have a tough time with historical fiction um for like romance novels of also reading um the politics of how like knowing the politics yeah. of how women are treated in mm -hmm. some of these days and ages and how unrealistic some things are yeah uh, and also like how much different I also wish it would be like so there's multiple levels there too that yeah, yes if you're writing it and you're an RP and it, you are just here for the aesthetics levels because you want Darcy in the field or you want you know to be a princess and that actually means something or have some power um yeah. totally understand you have to let some of that go mm -hmm. um especially in especially in an RP mm -hmm. oh boy in an RP so back to how to build an RP yeah. around that it's very important for the admins to have upfront their expectations written, not just in the setting section of that, but in the FAQ, I think, is where we have outlined a lot of the expectations for what type of lore compliance or historical accuracy we're going for. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because people are going to come in with all kinds of crazy expectations, mm -hmm. um, yep. and uh, and and, sure and that happens for any RP. But there are there are unique ones when it comes to historical fiction and historical fantasy that you don't see in other genres. Mm -hmm. And then I also think it's important that if you're building an RP, it, once you've made your wants clear, once you've made those things in the setting, once you've you know articulated your wants, you can't be a fact checker. No. Like you can't, because A, it'll mean that your writers don't want to play or engage yeah. in getting something wrong, but also it will ruin your game. If you're sitting there and being yes. like, you're not going to tear off a corset. 
Mm-hmm. Or actually, they didn't start using steel until this year. Um, yeah. And that... things like that, that it's like, okay, we, you gotta, you gotta just let it go at that point. Uh, and you've expelled out yeah. your things, and as long as they're not using computers or have cell phones or are breaking that like mm-hmm. that technology barrier too much, it's it's just minute details that aren't going to matter because it's an RP. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and it's a communal story writing. If this was a different project, then you could be as anal about those details as you want and should be in order to be accurate. Yeah. Uh, but you don't get to control what other people research and do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta, you gotta sometimes do a little, do a little bit of let it go um, to maintain group cohesion. Yes. Yes. Uh, and and also, like this is also a great time to educate people. If yeah. people aren't educated, if they are there simply for the aesthetics, if they mm-hmm. are just like, I want to play a pretty princess who wears pink all the time and gets married off to a prince, and you're like, well. We can, you can do that. This is an RP, so hell yeah. But let's like, yeah. also, since we're all in this space, we can talk about certain things. That's been some of the most fun that I've had in the group that we're running currently is just the conversations about all of the wild, wild things that happen historically or in the lore that we're working from. Mm-hmm. It's just all this out of character fan theory talk mm-hmm. basically yep so so or, to give you guys hey. a give you guys a little bit of a rundown kendra is running an rp right now that is uh game of thrones it is is prequel to the game of thrones books and the tv show right so it's back when yeah. the targaryens were actually in rule and the way that we made this work for a group rp is um duncan's the king right now and um and he has decreed that uh, the the rule that the the realm is going to be run out of Summer Hall. So all the Targaryens are at the, and his siblings are at Summer Hall, and he has strongly encouraged every house to send a couple representatives to Summer mm-hmm. Hall to hang out with him and placate his ego. So um, yeah, that's that's the that's conceit. Out. That's how we're making it work as a role play. And, uh, and that's how, that's kind of, that's the, that's the setup. So you, you kind of, so now, you know, when Kendra talks about various specific things, you kind of understand the background and why certain things have worked out the way that they have in this particular role play. And we drew from Versailles, a lot of the historical record of what happened with Versailles and how all of the French nobility just kind of lived there. Like they were expected to be in residence there Mm -hmm. most of the time. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's what I mean, it's even in of. Game of Thrones, we're we're still working off of real world historical inspiration, without going too far down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We're we're trying to keep it fast and loose, kind of like how the books are yeah. based off of War of the Roses, but not really. This is based off yeah. of Versailles, but not really. <laughs> yeah, it's that that's the general conceit, and then from there, boom, that's that's it. Like, okay, and. What's next? Yep. Bell's, we, Bell's we my cousin. Have. Bell's my cousin, by the way, guys. So, oh, hi, Bell. Yeah. <laughs> she can't hear you, oh. but I'll oh, tell her okay. you said well, hi. <laughs> all right. I thought it was our Bell. I'm not going to lie. No, say, it's not, not our not Bell. That's not how our Bell spells her name. That's no. Know. That's not it. <laughs> that's Change. because. That's because. Okay. <laughs> that's sweet. Thank you. Yep. So, um, so that's, that's, I think when it comes to, when it comes to historical fantasy and historical fiction, people that are very into the genre, that are used to consuming the genre, that are used to writing, you know, fiction or fan fiction in the genre, transitioning into role playing it, I think can be a real struggle because I think for people that really value that accuracy, it is very hard to understand Mm -hmm. why others might not be so interested, why they might really be in it for the aesthetics, why they, why they might really be in it from look, thinking of it more of like a, a kind of like disnified perspective where it's just it's not real it's yeah. very very fantasy like i know this is historical but I, I even if there's not dragons like i am firmly my foot is firmly in the fantasy of it you know and um and i think that can be very hard for people that, that value the accuracy to understand so mm-hmm. um so if that if you if that feels like you if you're like a person that's got everything's got to be very perfect correct and right all the time um, I think taking a, a deep breath and stepping back and making sure that you aren't the one 
to correct people. Because I think if you have that tendency, you can become kind of like the correction monster. And it's always you making yeah. the corrections. And then everybody says like, why does so-and-so always have to be the one saying this? Why do they nitpick every little thing? Right? So I don't want I think, to write with so-and-so. Yeah, I, exactly. And that's what it becomes. And so I think it's best, I think it's best to just step back you know, um, have have a bestie in the role play that you can message. Oh my God, they got this thing wrong. Urgh! You know, and just keep it at that so you can get it out um, mm. without disrupting yes. other players. I think also, um, yes. And then like, you're not having a good time if you're constantly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's the other thing. It's not only do people not want to write with you, but all of a sudden this thing that you joined to have a good time on is just going to make you infuriated. And yep. your options at that point are to continue to be infuriated, let it go and breathe, or let it go and leave. Mm-hmm, like those yeah. are those are the three options you got. And I'm gonna tell you, you're only gonna continue to have fun with one of those options. Yeah. <laughs> Cause no RP is gonna be perfect. No, no RP is gonna be even if you I, ran one yourself, it's not gonna be perfect. It's no, not it's also, it's also gonna tie into this too, is that history and the study of history is an art. So yeah. even, and this doesn't happen as much as in RP circles because you don't have as many of those like fact head people, but there are different versions of events and different opinions of how things went and different yeah. perspectives. And that only continues to grow, um, especially when you have a, a hobby that takes place on a worldwide um, like anyone in the world can come to it. So, you know, the, the perception of what is going to happen if you have a Crusades, uh, if you have a Crusades mm-hmm. RP, the yeah. of what people are going to think happened in the Crusades from a Western person who was raised at the, you know, the Crusades were a Christian yeah. war versus a Muslim, you know, um, or someone who is in the Middle East that can be accessible to that is going to have a very different look on history. Uh, and, and this doesn't happen necessarily as much, but it does happen where those cultural differences do take a part into it. And so I've got a fantastic example. I've got a fantastic example, historical fiction about the atomic bomb from America versus Japan in Japan. When you have historical fiction and historical fantasy that Mm -hmm. relates to the atomic bomb, you get monsters, right? You get monsters Mm -hmm. that come and destroy things. In America, when th- when you have um, fiction related to the atomic bomb, you have the superheroes got irradiated and they're and they and they're powerful and they're going to go save the day now. And that is very clear and very obvious. And I think that's all I even have to say. And everybody's probably going to go, oh yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. And like it, it immediately jumps to mind. And that is a very clear um, example. But it happens all over the place. And once you start thinking about it, you'll start seeing it in other places too. Oh, yeah. And and it can even happen like as little as details, as small details of being like, well, actually, Anne Boleyn wasn't this, you know, seductress no. that we thought they were. But some people might think that because some historians think that is accurate, some don't. Like, in, and if you're going to be so yeah. set on the details, those wars are going to happen. Mm-hmm. Which means that even if you have people who are dedicated to fact in your RP, they're still not going to be agreeing because history isn't fact, it is fiction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. History it, is literally a story. It's in the word. <laughs> pick. My tip is to pick no more than three things that you really want adhered to in an RP. Yeah. That you want. Like, like if you're okay, the person yes. running it. Corsets. This. Need to, people need to wear cl- clothing under corsets. And <laughs> yes, that's that's my thing. If you're wearing a corset, have a chemise on. Have a tank top. I don't care. It does not go against your skin. I promise you will ruin it. It, they are so hard to wash. That's they have mother- always been hard to wash. So you have an undergarment there to absorb your body oils. If you take nothing else away from the stream, please, please. That needs to be one of your rules for historical fiction from now on. Doesn't matter if they don't wear corsets. Doesn't matter if you are in the Wild West. Have to they wear wore corsets, corsets in the Wild West. Oh my goodness. <laughs> ah! Underwear is required. Okay, Kendra underwear says is underwear is required. No, no commando, no commando in Kendra's RPs. No, no, no. You can go commando. There's but that means no corset either. <laughs> no, that's a different part of the undergarment. Commando, waist down, whatever. Do what you want to do. That's always been wild. Waist up, 
listen, come talk to me, <laughs> at me. I don't care. I will help you out. I will help you find the stays. I will help you find the corset. I will help you find the bronzier. Please. But yeah, these, these are tips. This is a tip this for is my people. passion project. These, these are tips for people running role plays. Because if you if you have yes. too many things, then you just become like mm-hmm. you become like the the devil admin, right? Like you become well, yeah. I don't know what you would call it for a role play admin, but in my mind, I'm thinking like you become bridezilla, right? You become like adminzilla, right? Where yeah. it's just like all you're ever doing is chasing players about making corrections, and I just nobody cares. Nobody cares that much. Nobody, nobody cares, cares that, that much. much in an RP. <laughs> nobody does. Yep. Pick your three things that are really important to you for whatever lore or history you're going with. Pick mm-hmm. three things. Have those things clearly defined and everything else, just be able to let it go. Let it go. Let You've it inspired go. Lunar. She wants to have her character wear a corset now. <gasps> Lunar, yes, come to me at Drowfields or in the Discord. Come to me. I will hook you up corsets and stays are fascinating and exciting we all have our things mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> listen i just you know all of the anyway this isn't what this stream is about i will do no, a whole two is. hours on corsets i will do a whole two hour on corsets. oh man tell me when tell me when so i can watch it monday okay yeah monday. Monday. Hey. oh god this week monday. is gonna be crazy i don't know if i can commit to that but will you put the will you make put the vod somewhere that won't go away because yes. i know twitch will disappear it I, I don't think that i can keep the vod up forever um until i'm a partner or something a failure you something. can't okay yeah so listen i'll wait for you i will wait for you we're still waiting for me yeah, just start a YouTube channel. That's how I do it. And that way, you know, Twitch can't tell me what to do. I just put it on my channel. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. so so when it comes so so when it comes to historical role play, and the, and these are things that can happen in any genre of role play, but for whatever reason, is in historical fiction and fantasy, people get really hung up on accurate details, and and that's our okay. advice. Like, try not to like breathe, yeah. let it go, let it go. <laughs> Having fun's um, more important. Well, since we're already on the topic of like holding on fast to things that we think are important in history, uh, do we want to talk about lore compliance? Yes. Oh God. Yeah. Yes. Uh, lore <laughs> compliance and the racist implications. Okay, so mm-hmm. can I pop this bubble with D and D real quick? Yes. All right. Yeah, so I'm gonna. Think. Oh yes. I'm gonna pop. I'm gonna pop the bubble starting with D and D, so so that y'all fully understand where we are coming from and and how we feel about this topic, right? And I think we're all three of us are pretty much in agreement on this. So this is a big deal in in, in Dungeons and Dragons, where they have um, they have different fantasy races, right? And people will argue that they're not they're not supposed to be like races in in our world. They're supposed to be more like species, yeah. right? But that's not true because they called them races. If they were supposed to be species that didn't yeah. interpret breed they would have called them that and set it up like that that's not what they did they called them races Mm -hmm. and they can interbreed okay so they are not different species they are different groups of people with exaggerated differences right Mm -hmm. so in the real world uh races are, are a social construct right that we have created to differentiate people from different places vaguely right that's there's a lot more to it but just vaguely that's kind of what it is yes. so when you when you're in a fantasy world and you want to say the people in the forest look like this the people that live in the mountains look like this the people that live by the ocean look like this right like that's the function of fantasy races and they make them look you know way different more so than you know different t- groups of humans do because it's fantasy and they can do what the fuck ever they want right and it's fun okay so maybe you're so your forest people are elves and they have long ears okay fabulous right um sounds great uh, your your beach people your beach people do a lot of um, uh, swimming and stuff with the ocean so maybe they have they have webbed feet and they're like fish people okay cool fantastic yeah so then um, but then but then you will they always have like an evil race and this is where the problems uh. come in the problems come in when you try to add in a race where part of their features and part of their conceit in the story is just to be the bad guy, right? And that's how you end up with situations like orcs. And the unfortunate thing, the unfortunate thing with this is that it is not possible to create an evil race 
without it turning into, oh shoot, I've accidentally made real life race, usually black people for obvious reasons, um, and uh, I've, I've accidentally created real life race and I have said they are evil. And we do this over and over and over and over again, Dungeons and Dragons being the, the primary, um, the primary uh, e example of this that most of us have interacted with. And um, I am definitely of the mindset that orcs can be whatever alignment they, they want. I don't care what older rule books say. Um, they can be any alignment they want, full orcs and half orcs both ways. It does not matter how much orc they are. Um, they can be any alignment they want. And, uh, and I do not believe that, and I think something that we, we need to get away from is associating uh, goodness and evilness with different fantasy races, because that's where all the problems come in. Because then you create an allegory that is, oops, I did a racist. Yeah, Gary Gygax can huff my shorts. I don't care. <laughs> For real. For real. Like, come on now, especially drow. Yeah, that's another good example. They, they were like, oh, we want like cave people. Ducks. And then they, then they made them evil. They made them dark skin, evil race. And I'm just like, no, no, don't do that. Yep. Who? And yeah. then people hold on so tight to that yeah. idea and they want to stay like thick to the lore of, well, obviously. And then I play in a game with them and they're like, you can't do that. <gasps> and I'm like, yes, I can. Like, it's this my table. I can change whatever I want. Yeah, like, why would I want to hold on to this thing that's obviously harmful to real people? Yeah. No. Like, and it just doesn't even make no. any sense. It doesn't make sense when you think about it for more than half a second. No. It doesn't make sense to create it this way. Mm -mm. I mean, it does if you're racist. Well, okay, <laughs> listen. The green, which the creators are. Like, straight out, came out and said racism is like this stuff. Like, even this. Yeah. So, yes. or like Again, the, the nephew. Gygax. Yeah, can huff yeah. my shorts. Yes, I exactly. don't care. I will fight him. I will like, fight all of his descendants until they get it right. Kind Stop of like it. She who must not be named. Sometimes the creator gets a bigger head and a bigger audience in their popularity than they deserve. And it's like, well, first of all, go fuck yourself. Second of all, I can get all this information on the internet for free. And that's what yep. I'm going to do, bitches. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> exactly. It may be like that sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> time um and it's and that's and that's at that point what we're gonna do but mm -hmm. but as far as uh orcs absolutely uh also shout out that lord of the rings did the same exact thing uh yeah. the only care like the only um people of color are orcs uh mm -hmm. and they're not even people they're, they are a different species yeah. within lord of the rings but they are very much yeah. And the thing is, and I'll say this about Lord of the Rings, you can you can not be racist in the sense of like in your heart, you don't feel racist and you can still be racist because Lord of the Rings is the prime, prime mm -hmm. example of that. Tolkien did not have any animosity in his heart. He had only love in his heart for Jewish people. And yet he made a Jewish stereotype in the dwarves that is quite unfortunate. You know, they are they are greedy yeah. um, miners. They're all about find, getting their gold, and uh, it's all about the the glory of their of their um, displaced diaspora, right? And um, if that doesn't see, seem Jewish to you, then I don't I don't know what you know about Jewish people. But <laughs> it is it is, and uh, and and you know, and Tolkien was incredibly uh, you know favorable towards Jewish people. He he hated what was happening yeah. to them in in germany um very super super against that and yet his books have you know harmful stereotypes in them but this goes yeah. to show that and and we will get back to track with the historical context but this is important that if you are white mm -hmm. you are some level of racism of, of racist because you grew up in a society that is systemic race has systemic racism which means mm -hmm. that you have biases that you might not even be aware of such as yeah. the doors with Tolkien such as Jewish people being greedy um that also exists in Harry Potter right like and it exists in countless other things yeah. across the board as well um but this this is a trend that happens if you are not a person of color or from a marginalized group 
you don't realize when you are doing something that shows your ism Mm -hmm. whether it be you know racism sexism whatever and even Um, sometimes if you are part of that group because we all grow up in it you can end up with with harmful biases against yourself i mean we've all met the woman hating woman (laughs) you know you absolutely have harmful harmful biases um Mm -hmm. absolutely so it just is it's it's part of It's part of knowing that when you're diving into um, a topic that is heavily edited because our society is heavily edited with these isms to understand, like to bring it back to the historical context stuff um, that you are, you're walking into like your biasisms or your perceived notions of a time and era are completely wrong. They probably are. Like yeah. the idea that medieval Europe had no black people is so fucking stupid. When yeah, except that Othello exists. So, you know, that's not true because yeah. Shakespeare literally wrote a story about, you know, yeah, an, an, an older time from when he the, was where it was all about Moors. a black person. Absolutely. The Scottish Moors, um, yeah. even though they're not black, but from the Crusades, there have been mm-hmm. several people from uh, what is now the region of the Middle East who had immigrated up into Europe, which means mm-hmm. that there were brown-skinned people in Europe. There was trade with Cleopatra and Antony, uh, which means there was trade with people in Africa, which means that there were people of African descent in Europe. I know. Weird, <laughs> though. Hey, you can't hey. get in there and tell me that my fantasy of an all-white world doesn't exist. No. Uh, and then also having, I will. having to add on top of that, because a lot of the times the people who do include people of color within their historical structures only include them as servants or slaves. This was oh. a time before the British colonialist empire, mm-hmm. which means that sl- slavery in the modern day sense did not exist so it wasn't just black people who were being slaved or enslaved yeah there wasn't there wasn't racialized <laughs> slavery the way that there was during yeah, the it colonial wasn't times it wasn't chattel slavery it was different yeah there was and, slavery and it was awful but it wasn't like it oh, wasn't yeah. this it wasn't it wasn't yeah. the truth. it isn't what we now as 2021 people from mm-hmm. america picture as slavery yeah mm-hmm. there was a hierarchy within most european cultures mm-hmm. that had engraved slavery slavery within them and it was born and it was the structure and the place and the class in which you were born from mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, rather than being forcefully taken from your home to somewhere else yeah yep. Which exactly. is which people but, ignore. Completely. Look at feudalism. Because yes, <laughs> <laughs> like that's the whole. Yes, that's the whole way that worked. Yep. Yeah. So this is so this this is kind of what happens. The 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 person that wants to stick to the lore, that accuracy is very important to them, that they want to be perfect, correct, and right. Like they, it's like it's that that feeling mixes with the biases you don't even realize you have, and they and they swirl together in this miasma, and then it's like oops, I did a racism. And the first time someone points it out to you, it feels like they stabbed you in the heart because you're just trying to be accurate. You're just trying to show the research that you did. Um, And so we're here to tell you like, there's more reasons than just, you know, there's more reasons than just, uh, you know, getting along with everybody to, to let go a little bit of that accuracy. It also will help you with changing your mind as you learn more and grow more in, you know, whatever part of history it is that you like to learn about. And also, it turns out that the people that you are probably doing your research from are also guilty of those biases that you mm-hmm. already have. Um, unless you are reading, unless you are reading scholars of those people from those descents. So basically, unless we are, start listening to people who are of color, who are studying the actual accurate or more accurate history of people of color. Yeah. Uh, which a lot of historians are not because traditionally history is paved as white, at least here in America, um, you are going to continue to have those biases. So it yeah. does not matter the amount of research you do, your research is skewed. Yeah. And try not to feel like bad. Try not to feel like, oh, I'm an awful, terrible person because of this happened because we're all living in it and we can't help mm-hmm. it. The best that we can do is show each other grace. And um, when we realize we've done it, try to fix it. So this is not like an all is lost. You're you're awful if you do this. It's not like that. It's more about like being open to growth. You are not a terrible person because you thought Christopher Columbus 
was the hero of America if you grew up in yeah. America, if you grew up before yeah. the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. You were not a terrible person for that because you were raised with that belief. Mm-hmm. As we continue to grow and expand and realize, hey, actually what happened was genocide, yeah. then maybe we start opening up and start educating in a different way. That is the difference. Do not feel bad because you were raised in a certain way. Be willing to learn a new way. That is the best I got for you. <laughs> yeah. It, Happy birthday, Mr. Jane. Hi, Mr. Jane. Yeah. It's my favorite NPC. That's not true. It's my second favorite NPC, Levi. Cook. He's my favorite NPC. I yeah. have to keep Levi. Levi cooked for me, so I have to keep him number one. Hey, Eliza <laughs> lets you win. That's, That's actually, true. Eliza's really, actually, Eliza's everyone, really close for Eliza me. Eliza takes up top three. One, it's... two, and three. <laughs> everyone got put down. Our favorite NPC is just whoever is the camera is focusing on right now. That's it. <laughs> That's, That's it. <laughs> I can't choose between Mr. Jane and Eliza, though. I'm sorry. I love Eliza, but I love I... Mr. Jane, too. If Mr. Yeah. Jane and Mrs. Jane actually came out and got a drink with me when they are in Portland, then they would be my favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's just the subtle guilt that I have. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I'm kidding. I love everybody. Yep. So, so, Ke- uh-huh. so Kendra, um, so Kendra, get, tell like, cause you're super into the historical fiction and fantasy and stuff like that. So how yeah. do you handle, um, how do you handle like race when it comes to um, historical contexts, you know, especially in times before like race was even a, a construct that we that we talked about, because it always mattered where someone was from, like ethnicity always mattered, I think, in most human histories, yeah. the place you were from always mattered, but race didn't used to even really exist. So how do you how do you handle that? Um, since you're super into this and actually run a lot of these kind of games and things like that? Um, I say no, thank you. And whoever, so we use a lot of face claims in our games, even like at a tabletop setting, we use a lot of face claims. Uh, if it's made from a pit crew or whatever, I say, hey, I don't care what color of skin this character has. We will make it work. Um, I'm a big fan of, I grew up watching the Brandy Cinderella from like the magical world of Disney. Love that version. Or whatever. Yeah. Where <laughs> like, it doesn't make sense how the prince looks the way he looks from like a genetic standpoint yeah. but it's fine and it does not matter because the point of the story <laughs> yeah like it's not the point of the story it changes nothing so i say i don't care you know just don't be a jerk and have your character look however you want your character to look that's not what we're focusing on so I have noticed, that- however, something that you do in your games for sh- for sure is you're mm-hmm. you're more than happy to change a character's face claim that was originally white into um, a POC face claim, but not so much the other way around. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on on that. Like, what is what is that kind of stance do for the the role play, and what's what's kind of um, what's the value of that in in your mind? Because obviously, you think it's valuable because you're doing it, right? So um, I'd yeah. love to hear a little bit about that too. This goes back to the representation episode that you guys did forever ago, but there are a lot of white people that get screen time, either on the movies or in role play. And there's not usually a lot of people of color that get screen time in role play communities at all. And so if somebody wants to change that if somebody wants to have a non-white character get some screen time let's go let's do it but if the character who has their race as a part of their story as the part of their character arc, where that racial identity is important to that story I don't want to change that that feels disingenuous and that's part of the lore that I will stick to as a white person looking at stories, whiteness is not usually the center of a character arc. That just is what it is. And you get a lot of benefits from it, but it's not something you think about. It trying to look at a story where that happens. So in a Harry Potter, a lot of people fan cast Hermione Granger as black or mixed um, because a lot of the times or at least in the early books, a lot of her descriptions were just big curly hair. 
Mm-hmm. It having her not white doesn't change a single thing about her own personal growth and her own character arc. But if she was described as a black person or a mixed person, and that was part of her story, part of her character identity, that would be taking it too far. Yep, I think that makes sense. And I know I I definitely appreciate it because a a pet peeve of mine as somebody that role plays a lot with face claims is to join a role play Mm -hmm. and every single character looks the same. And that is just a personal pet peeve because my brain cannot wrap around it. I already struggle so much with matching names and faces and things like that in real Mm -hmm. life and in fiction. It's just, it's not something my brain is very wired to do. I tend to forget um, what people look like. (laughs) So uh, when I join a role play and everyone looks like the same Instagram white person, I, I am immediately turned off because I know I will never be able to fully um, you know, get into it in my imagination. So that's just me personally. So I always, I always prefer seeing a huge mix and a huge, um, range in, uh, in the face claims. And you know, the dang, the easiest dang way to do that is just to include some people of color. And then all of a sudden everyone looks different and my brain is happy because I can separate them in a, in my imagination and, and imagine them more clearly. And it's just a much more enriching experience. Mm Mm-hmm. What are you talking about? Historically accurate, there aren't any people of color. Fight anymore. me. <laughs> Actually, fight me. The so Wild it's... West is all white cowboys. It's both wrong I... and also I don't care. <laughs> yeah, like I glow well, in the dark. No, so I, I don't have a, a horse in that race. It like no, I no, fight me. I don't care. I actually That's... actively do have a horse in that race, and it's to go against your horse. <laughs> because fight me you're fucking wrong there were people of color <laughs> i also don't think it matters so this is this is um i'm gonna i'm gonna tell a story with the with the barcode scrubbed off right so because i don't want to i uh-huh. don't want to uh hurt anybody that uh okay. and, and have y'all f- sorry like, can i very quickly just i wanted to add something from what kendra said yeah yeah yeah. I, yeah and then i just didn't want to bring it back after another story no you're good uh, so, Kendra had said that um, uh, there was something about the the idea of of cast like of cast inclusion with with co- people of color, uh, mm-hmm. and I and very much agree with all of that except for the one time that I think or some certain events where it's not okay to change cast of color or maybe even not have a huge amount of diversity is when the RP takes place in very diverse places, ancient Egypt. To be example, mm-hmm. there yeah. should be one white person or two white people. Mm-hmm. That's it in the RP because mm-hmm. that is like that's it. That country exists with only black people and people of color. Like, and if you're doing yeah. the same sort of thing, I just I know that's kind of the opposite, but we don't really necessarily think about that. We think of yeah. people of color is the exception, whereas in in places where actually people of color live more than white people it's, yes it's that, that yeah. saves the majority but I, and I, but I think it's the same thing it's kind of like if you're making a, a medieval fantasy role play and it's it takes place in I, I don't know in like England or something then you're gonna have mostly white characters but then you'll have a few um you know probably black and Asian characters as as well and if you're if your role play takes place in ancient Egypt then you should have mostly black and Middle Eastern characters with a few white and Asian characters right like that's that's what Absolutely. makes sense for the setting yeah but unfortunately, with how people write stories, again, white... That's not what happens. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. important yeah. that if you're going to do ancient Egypt or anywhere in the Crusades or ancient China or anywhere in China, that your major- that your character is a majority of that place and of that yeah. extent. I will say that when I see role plays that take place in ancient China or in feudal Japan that they do a very good job Mm -hmm. of casting but it is specifically those zones nowhere else that because ancient japan and ancient china history Mm -hmm. is not actively or very well taught here in america school systems uh that you have to have an active interest in that history in order to want to sign up for that yeah Uh, which means probably already done the research and you already expect to play a character yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. I think that's exactly oh, right. No, that. Sorry, Karen, mm -hmm. But since we were talking about places and regions, I wanted to include that in there. No, well. that's a very that's a very good point, and it's very true. And I totally agree that as far as like looking at the the racial makeups um, and ethnic makeups of those role plays. It's true. The ones that do it the best is like the feudal Japan and ancient China role plays. It's true. Yeah, they you do. go in, you go in there, and it is all Chinese FCs. It is all Japanese FCs. Like, and they are they are very particular in it and and accurate. <laughs> and they do a great job. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I don't see that happen in any other no zone in RP. Me either. No, like, either. it's also it's also very interesting because white is so common and it is such mm -hmm. a mixed bag of people that like in those RPs you have specifically Chinese FC like people from China FCs yeah. and people from Jap and people mm -hmm. of Japanese and FCs whereas here it's like you could be Germanic and French and and, and English and a little bit of you know Ashkenazi Jew in there um yeah. and and then that's the color in there right is it's like mm -hmm. there isn't yeah. a specific place from each from each white person mm -hmm. which is interesting yeah anyway yep okay so so i want to talk just a little bit about some things that i've i've seen go down in kendra's rp and i'm gonna scrub the i'm gonna scrub the um the barcode <laughs> off right so uh <laughs> so because i don't i don't want to hurt anybody's feelings if you know if if you did if yeah. you did the bad or if it was your friend that did the bad because um, mm -hmm. nobody is really, we have been very blessed in this role play. No one has been yeah. absolutely crazy bonkers. People have been very, very kind mm -hmm. and accommodating and for the most part understood when we told them no. Um, yes. But we have had some people that we told no and they left. So mm -hmm. so here's here's a yep. thing. Here's a, here's a thing that happened. Um, we in it's Game of Thrones, right? It is fantasy. It is not real. These these places mm -hmm. are not real at all. So just just to be clear, this is not like this is not like medieval England or something. This is Game of Thrones. It's mm -mm. a Song of Fire and Ice role play, right? Um, and so we we've been a little bit random about these choices. Some of these choices probably could yeah. have been thought through better and we could have, you know, chosen different families for these it, admittedly, but we we didn't we said we didn't care and we just chose what we thought looked cool, right? So yeah. what that what that means is that we made the Targaryens all um, face claims from various sea dramas that Kendra is very into right now. And I actually think they're really fabulous. And um, and I'm really enjoying playing Shara uh, as the as the, uh, the FC that she is, by the way. <laughs> I would like to just take a sec side bar here and say that the HBO should really connect with sea dramas and their <laughs> wig department because okay. the trend right now in sea dramas is to have silver hair. And they look amazing. And you know then what? HBO you see the silver hair that HBO has, and you go, "Come on, the, the technology so is out there. The it's technology like, is out there." And did you see the preview for the new one? They're literally, it literally is like, "Hey, we spent all this wigs. money on these garbage wigs, and we're gonna use them." And they look mm -hmm. so bad. <laughs> they're party city wigs. They like, are. It's just, they're not. They're good. so bad. They're not. So, anyways, good. we have that. And then mm -hmm. the other, yeah. the other um, major house that we that we have that we've made this choice for is we have made um, the Aaron's uh, be all played by black FCs, right? And yeah. um, and so if you think about the lore, like okay, maybe this makes sense, maybe that doesn't. There's like arguments for it, and like if they should be this, that, or the other. But we just decided this is fantasy, and we don't care. Okay, um, this is how this is we're, we're making these choices. We admittedly very arbitrarily, but we want POC in the role play. And so and these are the choices that we're going to make. Okay. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you, there has been not one, mm -hmm. not two, but three separate incidences I can think of where someone came in, the very first question they asked was about the ethnicity or race of the Aaron and Targaryen FCs and how mm -hmm. open we were to changing them. And we said no. And they came back with some kind of like, it's not historically accurate because of blah, 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 or it's not canon accurate because of blah, 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 blah. And we don't care. I'm sorry, we don't care. And like this happened, this happened with um with uh, somebody that was wanting to, that was interested in the errands, right? They came in with a friend, right? Mm -hmm. 
And the friend yeah. is apparently a, a person of color. They said they were brown. I don't know what flavor of brown. Okay. They didn't say. We've talked to them for maybe like five minutes. Okay. This was not a long conversation. But, yeah. but literally like the, the POC friend like starts starts defending them and the, their choices. And I understand like you want to defend your friend and things like that. They ultimately left and it was fine. Right. And it wasn't like a big argument or anything. But, um, no. but just like if you are somebody that is really particular about accuracy Please, for the love of God, do not have your first question be about the races of the face claims. Like, literally, you are giving the first impression of, I care about whiteness more than other things. This is the, the, the priority for me. Whiteness is the priority for me. And I don't think that's what these people mean to convey, but that is what they are conveying. And that is the insidiousy of the racism in these communities. And it has happened now three times that I can remember and it's just ridiculous just off the top of our head three times yeah and there's if I more. scroll through the chat there might be more but there's three that I can remember mm -hmm. and it's just it's just like why is that your first question like please let me get to know you a little before I learn exactly what flavor of bigotry you have please <laughs> it, or I learn that you are a racist I mean yeah. even then you're going into a fandom that has zombies that has special blue zombies dragons creepy shadow blood magic and you that's that is where your hang-up is on mm -hmm. okay well the valerians were obviously white I'm like, mm. i can't there's one line that sticks in my head is i can't imagine the Valer the valerian people or the targaryens i can't remember if they said valerians or targaryens but this part sticks in my mind as asian i'm okay. sorry that's nice. So <laughs> good to know. So what? It that literally doesn't matter. That's nope. that's not what we're about. We wanted a more diverse cast than what we saw in HBO, and well, so we yeah, did. I mean, it's not hard to have a more diverse cast than what we saw in HBO. You need okay. I mean, <laughs> more people of color. It, and <laughs> it feels bad. Like it just feels dirty to have a specific location be the only place where you can have any sort of color other than white that mm -hmm. felt wrong to me mm -hmm. so when we were designing opens it was hey we like Idris Elba we like to have Idris Elba as an open how let's make he, sure we get it let's how make he sure we get sexy ass face on this in this that is that is honestly it, it. Staff rp without idris elba at some point we don't have we made no. have we ever made an rp without idris elba i can't think it's no, probably been years no. years and years and years no, no. <laughs> guess, like, not I, since I, i've been around the elba character uh <laughs> not since i've been around because i usually use his face yes because he's got a very specific aesthetic for a certain type of character that I like to play. So I use him a lot. But like, honestly, that's it. It just felt weird to have only South Asian endured. Only that. That felt dirty. That felt wrong. So we changed it. Mm -hmm. And that has been the biggest reason that people cite for not staying. And that's fine. If that's not your type of game, fine. There are plenty of other role plays out there that just have different shades of white. Ours is not that because that's not fun for us. It doesn't make sense for us. And why? Why limit yourself? I 100% I agree, which is why I think it was a really smart choice. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and and I hope more people do it because I think that it is, again, that this is a community that expects and has, and like, you can't even blame the individual. Like, I don't no. want to blame the individual. When we have consumed media and fiction about his, these historical periods, the Wild West, uh, the Civil War, um, hell, the Civil War, which is hysterical considering the ironic and not hysterical. <laughs> But um, medieval times, mm -hmm. we have consumed media that has only been centered around white people. But the mm -hmm. idea of a 
fit, like, and even we're talking about Game of Thrones. Like, we're not even talking about this is fantasy. This is historical fantasy. Mm-hmm. So even even the idea of historical fantasy setting that doesn't take place anywhere in canon and also doesn't take like doesn't exist in this world. And even then, the idea yep. of having POCs as cast members mm-hmm. is out of people's like scope of being able to understand and that is because we have consumed so much media that has been white forward Mm -hmm. it's very disappointing it's very disappointing that people can suspend their disbelief for magic and dragons and uh and all Mm -hmm. these things but they can't just suspend their disbelief when it comes to having somebody in the cast with darker skin it's very disappointing yeah a lot of the game want to yeah. Go ahead. And, and and in Game of Thrones in particular, it really seems like the, the fandom in general or this side of the fandom in general, it's like only, POCs are only allowed to be Dornish. That's okay. it. The Martells can be POCs, um, but that's or, it. Yeah. Or not Targaryen. What is it? Where is it that um, that Khaleesi in the first... Who, um, husband, Essos. Yeah, Essos. in, in, the, in uh, Essos. Essos. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, that's... And even then, they are in the fandom viewed as the bad guys because mm-hmm. they well, had the, slaves, the barbarians, yeah. right? And like, Khaleesi has to go oh, there and yeah. save them, yeah. right? Barbarians, like, or the rest yeah. of the free cities with the slavers' bay and all of that. They are yes. the bad people, yes. mm-hmm. or the victims, mm-hmm. or they are either the bad pe- people or the victims of slavery. Mm-hmm. which then puts them in again in that box of we are going to include POCs yeah. but they're going to be in the western conceived idea of what POCs are yeah which is slavery it's it's a bad look mm-hmm. and it's very easy to fall into and i the whole reason why i made this group was because i really wanted this flavor of historical fantasy and every time I joined other groups, I would find a lot of this problem or transphobia or I, biphobia. Oh. And it was in the out of character chats. Oh. And if I ever said something like, hey, one, not historically accurate, like you're claiming it is. And two, this is not great this is not good for out of character I personally as a player feel really uncomfortable it was always well that's just how it is there's never been gay people before there's never been transphobic people there's never been not transphobic people there's never been whatever and I cannot tell you how quickly I have left so many groups because of that and this is when I've had mods come in and be like, hey, oh, I'm part of X group. Don't let them ruin your time. I know it's, you know, annoying. I'm like, it's not annoying. It's actively harmful. And that's not the out of character environment I want. But even if it even if it is just annoying, who cares? Everyone's allowed to have things that are like too annoying for them and leave. Yeah. This is, like, never chase. No, also- don't chase people. <laughs> Mm-mm. Ever, ever, ever. I also think that there is a larger discussion here, as well as the idea of historical fiction media is not only doesn't include people of color, but it's not directed or or produced for people of color. Mm -hmm. Like the people who are in to, on a majority level, historical fiction uh, traditionally are white people. Yeah. Because it is traditionally stories about white people. Not saying people of color can't enjoy it, but I mean, Pride and Prejudice doesn't have a single person of color oh, in there. And Ugh. it is watching two rich white people fall in love with each other. Like, yeah. like that is not directed towards it's, POCs. Um, it's Western, starting to change. Absolutely. With um, Hamilton and Six and this new... Oh. Uh, Anne Boleyn, who is a black woman that looks beautiful, and I can't wait to find a way to watch the show. But that is why Hamilton, mm-hmm. with all of its with all of its problems, because we are coming back from 2012 when it was originally released, it still is problematic. But all of its problems was revolutionary because it spoke the language and yeah. was directed and made for people of color mm-hmm. 
even though the stories were about white people. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the, the it, thing is, and the thing uh, I want to go back just a little bit to what Kendra was talking about with um, with gay and trans people, because something oh, yeah. something that we have to realize is that because for the past long while, uh, our society has been very anti LGBT queer history has been nearly erased because there's been oh, so yeah. little study in regard to it. So you might think that like um, gay and trans people have always been looked down on, but that is just simply not true. There were plenty of periods in history where LGBT was no problem, or it was just, or it just was, it was just not regarded as any sort of positive or negative thing. It was a neutral thing, and it blows my mind a little bit that Game of Thrones has this particular problem because there are plenty of gay characters in Game of Thrones. It is, it is discussed. Mm -hmm. There is, um, there is Brienne of Tarth, who I don't think it's inaccurate to say she is some flavor of trans, you know? She decides yeah. to go be a knight, which is not befit of a woman, you know, but she does it anyway, and she's damn good at it, right? So she goes in into a different societal role. So it just kind of, it's very disappointing uh, that the Game of Thrones fandom is like that, when they have I... stuff in their fiction that, that, that you could pull from. I'm not surprised at all because if you look no, at the stuff that they surprised. could pull from, Brianna Tarth is not chemically trans. Like she, like it does not mention that she does no. fight a societal role. Mm -hmm. She's still like, and she is uncomfortable with the term lady. However, she still refers to herself as a woman. Oh so yeah, unless she's male also really. If you read the books, her chapters are really hard to read because of the verbal abuse that yeah. gets hucked at her but honestly even in canon who cares yeah, absolutely but I'm, I'm saying that that think, doesn't count as representation yeah. the, oh no, no it doesn't no is a sibling as is a possible king who is killed mm -hmm. in I have not read the books so I'm only gonna go off a tv show he's yeah. killed in the third season and mm -hmm. his lover who is then also killed yeah, like yeah. The, and that is the queer representation that you see on screen mm -hmm. uh game of thrones is not meant to be inclusive it is meant no, for no. the cis het white man and it yeah. is popular among cis het white man so i'm actually not surprised at all that the fandom is it's, not inclusive in those ways it's still disappointing it's, it's disappointing. still disappointing disappointing absolutely. it's gross yeah. not it's surprising. disappointing i and just let and just know people you know, if y'all are in the fandom and you're of these groups and you're like oh i know it's annoying when this person is is homophobic or transphobic or whatever um but try it try to ignore them you don't have to ignore them okay oh, yeah. you no. don't have to have these people in your game and if you want to have them in your game it's as mods and admins you should feel yeah. empowered to tell them we yeah. don't want to hear that opinion here you know, yep. they can they can say what they want in their private life. They can do what they want in their private life. But what happens in your role play is within your control. So don't feel like yes. you can't tell them like like you can't have a, a, a game like this because the fandom is like this. You can. You yeah, can. You can. People are hungry for it. People want it. We are having a great time yeah. in our group. I, I think. I'm having a great time. The people I'm having a good time. It, it looks like everybody's having a good time in the out of character chats. It's wild. It's great. You can still have all of the super fun, dramatic parts of these stories that are based in historical time periods while having gay characters, while having a trans character, while having people that aren't all white. You can do that and have fun. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. I'm so glad you're too. having a great time <laughs> but yeah, you don't have to you don't have to allow these people like you don't have no. to tolerate it just because the fandom's like that yeah because the fandom doesn't have to be like that it's been a safe space for these types of beliefs and unless you stop tolerating it unless you stop going like oh you know whatever it just is what it is it's going to continue to be a safe space for that. And it doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm also, I also want to add um, that the idea of trans and queer, like historic, like history being new is actually mm -hmm. really a Western ideology. If you look mm -hmm. at other religions, other histories, uh, they are much more open to accepting the idea of the concept of transgender mm -hmm. people, the concept of queer 
uh, religion, and that is because Christianity. Even even within Christianity, there were a lot of uh, women who were allowed to live (laughs) as men. Oh, absolutely. Yes. To be closer to God. And that was seen as righteous to give up your womanly sinhood and become a man and study. And I'm like, okay, medieval monks, but weird in, flex. In the early 19th century, or mm-hmm. 20th century, early yeah. 1900s, America, when Christianity took a more puritanical turn yeah. and it turned into the more modern mm-hmm. ki- time, um, that is when a lot of the erasure started. Yeah. Happening. Mm -hmm. so you do have a lot of Mm -hmm. of rep you do have a lot of like documentation of of those sorts of relationships prior to that time Mm -hmm. um but it is then during that time washed to either be like they were just roommates they were friends that was just oh they were roommates um they were just really deeply cared about each other in a non-sexual way and a non yeah we're bros just gals being um, pals yeah you know like writing Emily love Dickinson. letters to each other <laughs> that's no what we do there's no such thing as anyone being trans at all like all mm-hmm. of that was during that puritanical religious yeah. like in in modern day america um and and then we are now coming out of it and trying to then re learn what yeah. it is we all knew through a different scope mm-hmm. um yeah so in other words fuck christianity uh (laughs) no just kidding but just the just the religion of of like the erasure of it not the actual belief using it to further bigotry that is what i meant yes which a lot of people do do unfortunately it's that that historical idea of of erasure uh call it in the you know christianity and colonization sort of hand in hand sort of Mm. thing Mm -hmm. um it all yeah it's it's a mess because of it and that's just part of the fun of studying history yep yep um we we learn the more that we learn about history the more that we learn that it's not nearly as as white or cishet as we think it is (laughs) yep uh and again you are not a bad person for being raised to believe that it was Mm -hmm. however it is a good time to perhaps uh, accept that history changes uh, and will continue to change throughout the rest of your lifetime. Mm-hmm. That the facts that you learned as a kid are not the true facts. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to continue to grow with them. Yep. Yep. And it's hard. Like, it's hard to realize that what you, that this belief that you had, that this thing that you thought you knew, it turns out, you know, is, um, is either actively harmful or upsets a lot of people. And on top of that, it's probably false. I mean, that's upsetting to learn, Yeah, but um, yeah, it's also part of learning. Yeah. Nobody likes to be wrong, um, but it's part of learning. And so the, the, the more that you can adjust to that, I think the, the stronger writer that you're going to be in general, the stronger creative that you're going to be. Yeah, don't get me wrong. There's a part of me that wishes the story of Thanksgiving was real. Yeah, uh, that would be yeah. real nice. <laughs> I, really loved, I really loved it in the first yeah. grade. And that it was like, oh, actually uh, hmm. terrible. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I think, again, it's just part of accepting the change, mm-hmm. learning, being willing to learn, uh, and then question. And then also when someone approaches you saying, hey, this hot take, not really a good one. Yeah. Uh, you sit there and you go, I wonder why. And then you're willing to research it as much yeah. as you are willing to research anything. Yeah. Else. Right. I mean, there's only so much you can do when some stranger on the internet is, is telling you a thing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yeah. but that being, I, that oh being said, that being said, even if you, even if you don't feel the, the need to placate that particular individual that's messaging you, that doesn't mean like a little bit of Googling might not do you some good, you know, a little bit later it's, once you're not annoyed anymore. Yeah. There's also something to be said if in a fandom, in a historical fantasy setting, thinking about why the lore compliance that you want, why that is so set on skin tone. Mm-hmm. Why is that the part that you're hung up on? Uh, I think... I, because nobody complains. Nobody complains about the summer hall plot 
even though it's not canon compliant at all. Nope. No one complains. Mm -hmm. No one says that didn't happen. They didn't all go to summer hall. No one says that. No, nope. nobody says, Hey, Duncan was not in the line of succession. That's no one says it. Nope. Mm -mm. I think that there is a, I think this is just theory. So if I'm off base, it's totally fine. But uh -huh. I think that there is a level of escapism that people want when they go into fandoms mm -hmm. where they feel seen and represented it. So, you know, white cis pet men, Game of Thrones or, or fantasy settings um, that allow them to pretend that they don't have to worry about things like race and uh, queer representation or mm -hmm. anything that is different than them. And the reality is, is that in order to continue to change, our spaces for escapism need to also be escapism safe for other people, including those of color, including those who want diversity, including those who are queer or trans or anything like that, which means that yet your space is no longer going to be free of that yeah you need, to, you need to that's that's fair that. i think that's fair yeah and i and i think yeah. that if that if you that if that is your your bag and you're just like i really don't want to think about this stuff my my life sucks and i'm super busy mm -hmm. which you know uh, living living in in america under capitalism uh, yeah uh, a lot of people's lives do suck and it really doesn't matter what identities you have if you're working at minimum wage you know retail fast oh. food things like that yes your life probably has oh. some problems and you just want to get away for a moment to not think about all this crap i absolutely sympathize with that but i think that if that's what you're if that's what you're going to do you have to be a little bit choosier i don't think opening a role play that anyone is allowed to join is is appropriate or right i think it's totally fine to get together with a couple of your dude bro friends and 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 make a game that's exactly that but maybe don't open it up yeah. to like anybody can be invited cuz you're not creating a space that's really for everybody you're creating a space that's just for very specific group of people you know and and make and i think that if you're going to do something like that you have to clearly communicate that that's what you're doing and that your space is not for those people and you're not really trying to include them and i think where a lot of these groups get in trouble is they try to pretend that even though there are you know things things that in in their game that make it very clear that maybe lgbt lgbt people aren't welcome or that poc aren't welcome they still try to say we welcome everybody no, you don't. Ooh, ooh. No, you don't. You don't. So I think that that would be helpful as well. And I know that that sucks to say, actually, my game is just for this very specific type of person. I know that sucks mm -hmm. to admit that to yourself. But um, but I think I think it is healthier to do that. I mean, we have to do that, right? Like, my, our games are not for everybody. You know? No, no. It's something that you guys have said before on these streams is that role play is a private club. Yeah. And it's a private club. If you are going to espouse views that we, the mods, do not want around our group or our players, you're not going to get into our club. Bye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> and that's okay. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of groups. Mm -hmm. oh. oh. Oh, no, Kitty. I'm so oh, sorry. Katie. Yeah. Okay. So I think this oh. is a good segue into... Uh, the next part of hey it's not me it's my character <sighs> so I mean right that's this happens a lot in historical race in historical yeah. fiction because um racism mm -hmm. and outlying like definitely outspoken racism yeah uh, was much more publicly acceptable in mm -hmm. these times where things existed so if you're going to have civil war era you know yeah. you're playing in a civil you're playing in civil war um then yes your character if it's a white character is most likely going to be racist um yeah. definitely absolutely but that doesn't mean that uh players who exist in 2021 want mm -hmm. to play those things yeah and that's where you have to let some of it go Mm -hmm. um and that's where also where like red lines and triggers and everything like that comes yeah. into play 
Yep. And I think every you have to it's all you have you have to set it up with who you're trying to attract, right? Like I am yeah. definitely a, a bit more of an anything goes type of writer. I don't mind having racist characters. I think that's totally fine. Yeah. Um but I but... I have definitely seen situations where people try to hide their bigotry underneath their character. Mm-hmm. And and the thing is is you say you can always tell, you can't always tell. Sometimes you find out later, you know, that that's Uh what was going on. Um, But you just, you have to be, you have to be very particular, right? About how you do that. And I don't think that it's wrong that if you feel like my barometer is not good, I don't want to deal with, with, with dealing with that. I I think it's Uh okay. Then you need to ask yourself, like, should I just make a game where racism is not allowed in character? And and if you feel like you Mm -hmm. cannot if you can feel like you cannot handle being able to, to tell if somebody is crossing the line, then maybe that's how you need to make your game. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Well, uh, again, it's a private club. You can make your rules. Yeah. And it's, oh man, it's just, it's such, and it's such a difficult line because some people do want to explore those dynamics. Yeah. Like some people do, whether it be as a like, if you are, you know, if some people do as far as the character depth and wanting to get into it. And that doesn't necessarily make you a bad person. Yes. You need to then respect the boundaries that exist mm. in other people. Read the room. Oh, Lord. Also, um, really tell the difference between uh, character and person and out of character. Yeah. Like, and this yeah. happens, like this, this can be very akin to like, um homophobia like yes we had uh i'm gonna go back mm-hmm. to atlantis we had an rp yeah. where there was a character on there uh who was incredibly homophobic mm-hmm. um and and did some very terrible things to a queer character uh and it is certainly because the character was homophobic not the person we we loved yeah. the uh person who played this character but it it did make people, some people really uncomfortable with the mm-hmm. situation. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's okay. As long as you as the mod team are not na- negating and navigating those situations. It's extra work for you. Like, I'm not going to lie. It'd, oh, it'd be, it's extra work for the yeah. mod team. So you have to, you have to know that, um, that if you're going to have an anything goes type of role play, you probably will have extra work on your plate. Cause there's going to be somebody that comes in and says, Ooh, Ooh, a boundary. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, <laughs> you know that's what they're gonna do i, I want to be hitler mickey mouse oh, oh my like, god yeah, it's, it's that. <laughs> oh my that god. one i had to say that. no to oh i mean I, yes I i'm anything hitler. goes but no you cannot be hitler mickey mouse i had to well, say no to that and that's when you that's where the trust of mm-hmm. the character and a trust in the player comes and yeah. that's and that comes with the privilege of knowing the writing group for mm. a Mm-hmm. The person who ended yeah. up who had this, the, uh, the, the writer who had this character is someone who had written with us for five, six years. So we yep. knew yep. that their beliefs were not the same as this character. Uh, yep. And we yep. knew like as the, and as queer people within that, in our community knew that mm-hmm. this was fiction. Uh, some of the newer people didn't. Uh, yeah. And so it was up to us as the mod team to sit there and be like, Hey, gotta, mm-hmm. gotta try to be, safe got to try to talk about this if we need mm-hmm. to but also know that what is fiction stays in the game uh and this again can be can happen with with other topics such as racism um but you I think it is even a touchier subject yeah I mean uh, I think I, I think like um Koneko to to go to your question because we are starting to get mm-hmm. towards the end of the stream we have yeah. um we have a a a episode about like problematic shipping and problematic topics um we mm-hmm. also have an ep- episode an interstage window episode about like conflict we have an episode about abuse and role play and things like that i think those would be good episodes to go watch because we we address certain things like that but the yeah. the the more taboo and the more crazy thing that you're gonna write like like the darker the brain worms the more trust you have to have in the other writer mm-hmm. and sometimes the answer yes. is that just takes time to build and mm-hmm. and and you just have to be patient and i don't believe that it's it's always best to pull out your deepest darkest brain worms um you know go first impression here's my here's my abusive homophobic man you know new group of people that don't know me so yeah 
<laughs> yeah, that, and I also think you have started doing the work to lay down that foundation. It sounds like as far as like mm-hmm. apologizing and making it clear the difference yes. between and, and you. Um, sh- I, I think that as long as you're not coming out of the gate with here is all the terribleness mm-hmm. in my head, uh, and you you slowly build up to it, you start yeah. to trust with the people. But again, it is building that relationship and also checking in with people. Yeah, um, uh, are you still okay? Continually. <laughs> check in with people and definitely especially there are some threads that I have been a part of or I have seen in groups that we've run that are not for everybody and require very specific levels of consent to see where we have where the players said hey heads up this is happening in this channel probably don't go look at it this is here's the summary Mm -hmm. um and then that's the other thing about squicks and triggers is that Mm -hmm. oftentimes we don't know that there are squick and a trigger until we stumble upon it yes um which means being in consistent contact if there is something that is big uh ask it it is in my it is in my opinion in situations like these um i am 90 percent of the time of the belief it is better to beg for forgiveness and ask permission However, <laughs> yes. during things like this, it is better to other way around. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, but I think I think those those other episodes will go a lot more into that for you, Koneko, and, and give you a lot more examples and things like that. Um, but uh, but I don't I don't think you're I don't anything you want to write. I don't care how bad it is. You're not a bad person for wanting to explore that in a fictional setting. There's tons of reasons people might want to do that. Um, and, uh, and 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 you know it's fiction. It's fiction. So ultimately, at the end of the day, it's fine is the truth. And to, to bring it back to historical role play, I think what ends up happening is people want to want to do these like these like dark taboo things. And um, and instead of doing the legwork of building up those relationships, what they do is instead go historical accuracy stamp, yeah. go. This is my excuse yes. now to be to 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 do this this thing, to write this racist thing. Historical accuracy stamp. You know, instead of just being like um, instead of doing the legwork of, I want to write this racist thing. I know it might upset some people, but I want to explore this topic. Um, you know, does any does somebody want to do this with me or, you know, whatever, 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 right? I, I also think it's up to the player in some states to read the room. Um, mm-hmm. Yes. And, and I don't want to, like, <laughs> sound victim blamey, but I'm sorry. If you are going to join a Civil War era RP, the likelihood of there being some heavy racist characters in there mm-hmm. is going to be more... I think then in a medieval RP, right? Just yeah. because yeah. They're, they're, it's a racially charged time. Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I think that is important when trying to choose your era. Again, yeah. there can be RPs that exist that are set in the Civil War that don't have to do with racism. Mm-hmm. Or even in Western, which is the same exact era. It's just yep. in a different place. That it, in- It's got a different flavor of racism. Oh, it has a very different flavor of racism. Mm-hmm. But you know yeah. what? If you just want to be in a small Western town where you pretend that everyone who is a person of color is friends with everybody who is white Kumbaya. accurate to the time, you can. Uh, yes. And at that point, as a mom team, you get to, you get to mm-hmm. dictate that. You get to get rid of the realism to focus on that aspect rather than the realistic as- uh, aspect. Yeah. And then it is up to you to police that happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that is <laughs> our advice for historical yeah for historical yeah. fictions <laughs> yep that's pretty that's pretty much it um landon to as a as a, a palate cleanser um for all of this very oh. heavy talk today do we have a good news article yeah uh, yay we do let me pull it up uh-huh. hold it up yet <laughs> um so we love a good i am a huge fan of um not only astrology but astronomy yay uh so i often have astronomy themed good news articles so here is this one okay. oh my goodness I'm adding... i can share with eliza so, uh every time every time this time of year we go through a meteor shower from the trail of the Halley's comet mediator meter mm-hmm. Uh, so that's going to happen here on the 16th to the 24th in the Northern Hemisphere. Ooh. So if you're here in America uh, or uh, Northern Europe, you'll be able to see it. Um, and it's beautiful. Uh, so this is this is the 
suggestion on how to see it and when to see it. The 21st is going to be the highest day, which also happens to be the day after the full moon. So uh, if you're also into astrology, there's a lot of shit happening there um, because it's also happening in the Orion constellation. So that's what I got for you. Oh my gosh. And look at this picture. This is beautiful. Oh yeah, I love it. No. So just wanted to share some fun things that are happening this month. Great. Um, in the I spot. love this. Okay. So I think I might actually be able to, I might actually be able to, to watch this if I get up really early. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's uh, 4, 4 a.m. I feel like that's doable. That's not too crazy early. I think I can one day wake up that early just to go see this. So, Anything from a 10 yeah. to over 30 meteors each hour. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to have to wake up. This, Darn. This meteor shower and the um, Perseids, which happens in mm-hmm. August, mm-hmm. are the two largest yeah. of mm-hmm. uh, the year. So this is the so, 21st, peak time the 21st. So Landon said it, but I'm just saying it again and showing you guys here. 21st. So mark your calendars if you're interested in that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, it might be a little, it might be a little bright or a little hard to see just this year, just because of the full moon happening at the same time. But like I said, that's kind of a magical moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool anyway. And it might just be a good thing to, you know, either wake up, set your alarm. Uh, if you don't have to be up until later, wake up for like an hour, get some hot cocoa and just go out and watch the stars. Yeah. Don't, and then go back you to know, bed. try to put your toddler <laughs> back to bed. <laughs> just wake up the first time your toddler gets up in the middle of I mean, the night. yeah, I'm a teacher, so I'm up at that point anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Reason number two, why I will never be a teacher. <laughs> not waking up that early. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> no way. All right, guys. I mean, I'm not. I'm exaggerating, <laughs> but it's fine. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. Okay, okay. So, um, so end end of the stream stuff. Kendra, you're you're our guest. Um, so tell us a little bit about uh, where people can find you or what you'd like to plug today. All right. Well, people can find me as usual on Twitter.com at Drowfields, but mm-hmm. you can also find me now on Twitch.com at Drowfields, oh and I stream silly Crusader King stuff and maybe eventually Stardew. I don't know. We'll figure mm-hmm. it out. Uh, but definitely Monday. go follow definitely go follow Kendra on Twitter I have watched um piece parts of both of her streams that she's done so far <laughs> they are ridiculously stupidly entertaining I have to tell you guys um Aww, she's very very you. funny she's very very funny so um so if you if you like if, that kind of stuff uh go watch it or even if you don't because I had never played this Crusader Kings game I hadn't, really didn't know what it was um and so uh, Kendra made it very fun it's honestly that game is just crazy bonkers we haven't scratched the surface of weird things that will pop up apparently it gets weirder as you go right like the more generations you produce the weirder it gets we haven't run into any cannibals and we haven't had a witch secret yet and those are two things that can happen Mm. my favorite words which tells you a lot about me if if those are two of my favorite words oh my god i love it (laughs) <laughs> all right um, well um well landon uh where can everybody find you what would you like to plug today you can find me at land in maine on instagram and twitter uh, i'm and on tiktok i'm posting many a thirst traps on there recently Hi, it's uh, great it's <laughs> awesome honestly <laughs> uh and then also i'm all of my friends are uh streaming so i might be bullied into doing that but nothing yet Yay. just if you want to bully me bully me on any of those social medias uh, and I'm putting my social. Oh, did you put my socials in there? I sure did. So good to me, Karen. Uh, <laughs> I fast like lightning. So mm-hmm. good. That's all I got. So okay. follow me at the link on Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. All right, fabulous. I'm I'm looking. I'm looking to see if any um, any of our friends in Elixir are streaming. I think I'm the only person in Elixir streaming right now. Maybe is this Razaput person still streaming? Um, let's find out. Anyway, y'all can find me in all of the usual places. Here's on my socials. Y'all know how it goes. Um, and, uh, and I will see what I can do about all of these frame rate drops that we've been having this stream so that hopefully by the next stream that will be fixed, but no promises. Things are really crazy right now. And I apologize for that. It's some family drama and stuff going on that I have to deal with. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep you guys updated and let you know if a stream is uh, happening or not happening. And then also, 
um, you know, if, if I can fix the frame rate thing. But regardless, it shouldn't, you shouldn't have weird frame rate issues on the VOD. So you can always go watch the VOD. Mm -hmm. um, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Katie, for the, um, for the applause. Now Landon can live another week. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you got applause! You got applause uh, last the last week when you weren't here, Landon. <gasps> by the way, yeah. So I we I made do, sure that you wouldn't I die. Figured, I figured because I'm still alive. So right. I was like, yes. Someone must have applauded me, even if I wasn't. You got a couple last. Yeah, week. you got a few. You got a few. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yes. <laughs> God, okay, so here's um, what we're gonna do. We're gonna raid into um the the uh. uh Thumper's art friend, whose name I can't pronounce, the one that starts with oh, an yeah. I. We've raided into them before. Oh, yay. Um, so that's who we're going to raid into. They're doing, some, they're doing some art stuff. They're working on a zine and some commissions. So that'll be fun. So that's who we're going to raid today. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us. As always, of course, don't forget to make it a great day. Um, I will see you guys on Thursday. Yay. Don't forget to be awesome. Bye. Bye. All right. Almost. Hang on. Ten more seconds. I did it. Oh. It took me a oh. while to spell the name right. I really struggle with this name. I'm sorry, guys. Well, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Oh, well. Anyway, love you. Oops. Bye. All right. <laughs> uh, almost. Okay, guys. All right. We can we can raid now. Okay. Don't forget to make it a great day, everybody. And don't forget to be awesome. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys.